Hello, I'm, my name is Daphne from Mikono, and it's my absolute pleasure to be sitting today with Senanu Akutu, the director of Da Living, which is an interior styling, styling firm that's quintessentially African. Um, Senanu launched Da Living after making a huge career move into interior design, and that's something we'll touch on later. Um, Senanu is, was also the head set designer for the hit series called An African City, which really put Ghana on the map for most of us who had never experienced contemporary African culture on TV in that way before. Um, so after getting involved in that, Sananu launched a flagship store for Da Living in Accra, Ghana, I think around 2016. I won't go too much into it, but I'm just setting the scene here because I'm, I'm so honored to be talking to somebody who for the past 10 years has been at the forefront of putting contemporary African design on the map um, in, in many different ways. So let's dive Let's dive into, into where this story began, Sinanu. I know you're from Ghana, but tell us about your experiences growing up around Africa. Yes, yeah, so I was born in Dar es Salaam in Tanzania, and probably where um, my name for the company Dar Living comes from. Dar actually means home um, in Arabic. Um, so I was born in Tanzania. We lived in Swaziland, Zimbabwe, Nigeria. I've worked in Togo, Ghana, of course, a little bit in Madagascar. So yes, um, moved around the continent, purposefully so. Um, mm. And that has definitely influenced um, my creativity um, and, and my style. Yeah, because the places that you're mentioning, when I think about the various, you, you literally were crisscrossing the continent and you were experiencing cultures which were so different. Because when I when I think about Ghanaian culture and then I think about Tanzanian, it's so different to Botswana culture as well as Zimbabwean. And so I can just imagine why that then led you to have this very sort of like eclectic um, style. So, so, so tell us, you, you didn't immediately go into, into design. You followed a completely different career path. What was that? So my background is actually in sexual and reproductive health and family planning. Um, I've worked for the UN. I've worked for Mary Stopes. And um, yeah, completely different, different fields. Um, nothing related. <laughs> nothing at all. Okay, so so, but had you been creative up until that point, up until the point when you made the switch, or tell us about that moment when you decided, I'm actually done with international development. I'm now moving into this completely. I'm doing a hundred and eighty degree turn and moving into the creative space. Mm -hmm. It's so funny when people ask me that question because it 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 sort of presumes that everything was well thought out and I was aware of everything. Um, Clearly, I had creativity in me. I don't think it's something that I really consciously thought about until perhaps I felt that I had had enough of what I was doing. Mm. Um, and, and I was like, no, I do want the chance to be creative in a sort of work area. Mm -hmm. and, and when and how am I going to get the chance to do that and what should it look like? Um, so it what really was a enough of this mm. and on to on the next. <laughs> and if I don't do it now, when am I going to do it? Mm. Mm. So what did that moment actually look like? What 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 I, I want to know, like for me, my switch from the world of corporate banking and portfolio management happened when I had a birthday and I invited all my different friends from different backgrounds. And but at that point, I was thinking, I need to do something with Africa. All I knew was I need to yeah. do something with Africa. And so I had this birthday. And at this point, I was really loving wearing African clothes, contemporary African clothing. So I made myself a really beautiful dress for my birthday. But I was frustrated by the fact that I couldn't really find it in a store. I couldn't find ready-to-wear African fashion. So out of that frustration, I then made myself an outfit had my birthday party and everybody of all backgrounds fell in love with this dress and that kind of set the ball rolling in my mind to think 
well, I'm not the only one who loves this. People of all backgrounds do. How can we actually give them this experience on a ready-made basis? So tell me about your, like, how did the transition happen for you? Well, Daphne, I'm so glad you shared that story with me because you've actually now given me words to explain what happened to myself because it's almost exactly the same. Mm. Um, I actually now realize now that you mentioned there was a, a birthday and then there was a dress and then now I'm realizing that I was building my house in, in Accra and um, it was, you know, we would come to the end of it and it was time for interiors and I was definitely very much part of that. Mm. I remember even thinking, even positions where I was putting trees and I did the floor plan for the house. So it is in this period that I realized, hang on, I, yes, I love home decor stores and I can spend hours in them uh, as opposed to hours in a, in a fashion store or mm -hmm. in a clothes store. Um, but I hadn't really, I guess, had a chance in life to, to utilize that and see how that works. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't really aware of it. I wasn't really aware of that. Uh, the skill or the passion or the you know the creativity behind it so yeah. I think it is in that process of putting my own home together and then realizing that in all my travels and all my shopping which is craft-based always and <laughs> I holiday in Africa I work in Africa I've lived in Africa it's just what I you know I'm a pan-Africanist mm. so um, I realized I think in unpacking everything and trying to do the interiors and decorating, that all this stuff that I had collected over the years in all these different African countries mm. actually went together very well in my mind. Color-wise, texture, I mean, it was, to me, it made sense and it made my home. I hardly, mm. I hardly bought anything new. Um, and if it was new to me, it was, it had been old to my mother, let's put it that way. Mm -hmm. So. I was even taking stuff from from her so I decided with a lot more of excess crafts that I didn't need to use in my house that I should have a sale and around the same time that I was thinking I do want to be more creative what does that look like what would it look like if I'd been able to go to a home decor store and buy the things I needed for my house imagine I didn't have this collection of all the things that I had somehow put together over the years unknowingly where would I have gone yeah. to create the home that I wanted? Um, yeah. I had a sale. I invited friends. Friends invited friends. Um, and uh, sold a lot of pieces. And everybody thought I was an interior designer. And I thought, okay, this, no, I'm not an interior designer. This is, wh what is this? What is this that other people are picking up on? Mm -hmm. And I think it was an ability to put different <gasps> African styles, at least, mm. put different styles um, together in a coherent way in a space and make a home or make it make space. Mm. Yeah, that makes so much sense to me because as diverse as African design is, I mean, if you think about Ndebele, which is more geometric and the different influences, they somehow go together and their commonalities that complement each other so well so so well now talking about your house that you built in in Ghana I read somewhere that um this series called an African city actually mm -hmm. the first the first series your house was actually featured in in an African city oh it was actually mentioned somewhere <laughs> I didn't realize we had said it. <laughs> yes, no, honestly, I, when I heard that, I thought I need to go back and find the series and watch it again and see those elements. Because if 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 there's anybody out there who hasn't watched An African City, this was truly a moment, I, I think, in the African creative space. It was a confluence of Ghanaian excellence in design, production, directing, acting, all of the elements, fashion and decor. And I remember as I watched it, I just, ha I was just, it was such a heartwarming feeling to, to see all of these influences. Now, at the time, I didn't know who was involved behind it, other than perhaps the director. But when I read more into it, I realized that this was a time when so many people who were prominent in, um, the people who contributed to the success of the show were, have still remained prominent, people like you and have gone on to, to bigger things, including the actors and, and all of that. So it, it now makes sense to me 
that these people together created such an amazing and, and, and an iconic series. So, so what was that like? That was, that was an amazing um, experience from completely outside of what I know, mm. um, filming, TV, set, mm. I mean, just not where I thought I would ever have an experience. Mm. Um, the creator is a friend of mine and really how that happened is she just put a lot of people that she knows together. Because, you know, I guess when you're producing something like that for the first time, you're going to put it on YouTube. There is no funding. There is no money. Mm. You have to, you know, pull your, your pool, yeah. you know, your plan <laughs> together. The power of networking, eh? The power of the network. And um, kudos to her for keeping those networks in school. I mean, she'd been to school with the actresses, high oh. school with the actresses. I've known her a long time. Um the fashion uh, costume person um, we we knew um, she, she might have been the one person kind of sort of behind the scenes that was already doing quite a bit in her field she was already styling people she was already a reader okay. um, but yes it was just a case of I want to create this show mm. how am I going to do it yeah and um, if we didn't all know each other before it was very quick you know kind of bonding on on set yeah um to this thing that we all believed in and therefore we were going to help our friend to create i would have loved so, yeah. to have been a, a fly on the wall in that in that process <laughs> but um talking about i'm sure that was also a, a real sort of milestone in your in your journey um in design i know that one of your ethos is, is to Africanize home decor to paraf maybe I'm paraphrasing but I think that that if you look at the timeline of the Africanization of design if you place Black Panther in among you know on that timeline I feel like this this was an early you know this was an early moment this was an earlier moment yes. that really really helped yes. for me personally on my journey as well to sort of say it made me want to visit Ghana. It it really did, actually. So, so I know that this is your ethos. Um, talk to me more about your thoughts on wanting to see African design in settings other than market style settings. You know, and and I suppose maybe yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, Daphne. For most of us, you know, that are living on the continent. Um, that are that are in our social economic circles, you know, middle, I don't know what you want to call it. I don't mm. actually know what you call it. Mm. Um, and who have traveled to other African countries and seen other ways of weaving a basket, other ways of, you know, everybody, all of us on the continent have a woven cloth. Yeah. And it's not just country-wise, it's um, ethnic and tribal-wise. So those are similarities. Those are things that come together. They look very different when they're done, but the technique of weaving is mm -hmm. an African thing. Yes. Um, the more you travel, the more you see it in different ways, used in different ways. Um, and so to just have that concept of these pieces as curio or as um, therefore for tourists, in a market setting, nothing wrong with that, but it just isn't the only place that we want to see those beautiful crafts. It's not the only way in which we use them, traditionally and more contemporarily. Um, so, you know, let's 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 use them for us, yes. and not just for display for for tourism in a certain way. Um, we use these pieces traditionally. Um, we don't have to mark, mark, market them in just a way yeah. for, for tourists to be able to enjoy and pick up quickly and, yeah. and take home. You're right. And, and, and I guess my angle is always the, is the financial angle, um, given my, my background. But it's also by always sort of presenting these products in a market setting, the value is never realized. The true value of these pieces is never realized. When I think about how long it takes for um, a kente cloth, which is woven on a loom, 
and how long it takes for a weaver to actually qualify as an expert weaver. It's year, it takes years for that to happen and the length of time it takes to produce just one piece of cloth. If we're just putting these pieces in a market setting, we're never realizing the true value. And then we're never really realizing the prosperity that these artisans, you know, have a right to, I think. So I, I truly agree with you um, on that. Is that something that leading on to, I suppose, you launching, um, I know that you launched a flagship store. I can imagine that that kind of led into, um, that thinking led into your um, launching of your store. Oh, no, definitely. Definitely. Mm. It was, again, um, if I hadn't had the pieces that I had, if I hadn't had the, the, the blessing of being able to live in all of these different African countries yeah. and, and collect these items, how would I have, how would I have represented myself in my own home? Mm. Mm. I have no, no uh, you know, I, okay, I've been to South Africa, so I know that I could have traveled and gotten a few pieces, but even then it wouldn't really have represented me. Yeah. Um, that, again, a completely different style. Yes. Um, so definitely led into that. And, and this is where I think my international development background also then comes in. I mean, first of all, just as a creative, as you said, if you want to add value, we're human, we're visual. If you give that same basket, you know, a, a shelf, a well-taken photo, a story behind it that's well-written, mm. um, the history, the, you know, the, the tradition of it, Mm. you see value yes very differently than if you just see it uh, on a dusty floor mm. you know wherever mm. and yes that's where it was made and that is part of the story it yeah. can be shown it old but you do just visually see it better you know in a in a better taken photo or in context mm. as as darling puts pieces into the home these are pieces that perhaps weren't seen as decorative pieces for the home before. They mm -hmm. had their traditional use and now we're putting it in a, you know, in a in a decorative fashion, in a in a whole interior mm. style. Yeah. Gives it a very different value. And then you can start to imagine yeah. um, what goes behind it and how much that it is. But sorry, going back to it does come back to the international development side of me, which is all of these artisans in villages, in towns that are producing these beautiful crafts, what are they getting? How are they marketing? How are they able to market their pieces um, outside of the market setting? I mean, they're lucky if they get to the market setting in the capital city. If we're talking about a, the Tanga basket from the north of, of Ghana, the lucky ones get their baskets under a tree in Accra somewhere. That's that's a good deal, wow. but it can get better. It and then get as better. it gets better, livelihoods are improved. You're so right. You're so right. Lovely segue because for me, one of the things that still frustrates me is now to speak to, with my work with Mikono, I'm speaking to more and more artisanal um, yeah. sellers. And yeah. you hear that they've been supplying you know, they've been shipping out, their products have been exported for years. And yet yeah. when you look at their where they're working, the working conditions, they're sitting on the floor under a tree. And the sums don't, it's not it's not adding up to me. Like um, this should be a livelihood that should give you a comfortable, you're doing this every day. Um, so why is it that, whilst the brands are thriving that sell that retail your products you are not thriving surely that is not an equitable supply chain um especially when a lot of brands are talking about sustainability these days and ethical yes. production it's yes. it's quite frustrating i've been banging that drum to sort of say how can we say we're ethical when the people right at the bottom of this supply chain are still you know, they're not comfortable. They're not comfortable. They're not making a comfortable living. Um, so it's great to see, you know, brands like yours actually, you know, you, you move forward with the ethics, with the right ethics um, as well. 
how else do you engage with the artisans that you, you source from? You're always involved somehow. You always have suggestions. I yeah. think also I found at the beginning, um, um, definitely with the first store, I suppose when I had the second store, I just moved to a different area. Mm. I was working and moved same with the same roughly the same artisans so maybe mm -hmm. it didn't happen as much okay. but um to begin with I also felt I also found sorry myself um quite involved with pricing mm -hmm. um and this is something that I'm sure Mikono knows you know you know very well and you're going to be involved in is is people just to me were not pricing their products mm -hmm. properly mm -hmm. um and, and even when they did come up with a number, there was no distinction between retail and wholesale. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and so um, on the one hand, I felt that in, in some cases with artisans, things were just too, too low. There were not, mm -hmm. the retail price being the wholesale price didn't make sense. Mm -hmm. um, the price they were giving me sounded more like the wholesale price. Mm -hmm. And therefore, if I had it in my shop, for for whatever percentage up they should also be able to sell it at that price exactly um and this is where i have to say a, a lot of the conversations happened mm -hmm. but i you know i wasn't necessarily in the training and capacity building mm -hmm. side of it so it would be a conversation several times and quite frankly if the person if the artisan didn't get it i felt like there wasn't they probably you know the relationship wasn't as strong you know i think they just felt like well you're trying to change my pricing and you're not in my business and sometimes that just you know they just kind of stepped away yeah um it's and, great and to it hear that happen. it's great to hear that from your point of view as somebody who is selling on on selling products because we we are running uh master classes and giving resources to our artisanal makers to sort of say some of them, the prices are too low, as you say, and others, they're just unrealistically high. Yeah. <laughs> Neither of which is a sustainable way to do business. So we are working really hard to equip uh, makers with the tools and the actual formulas, you know, to help them actually come up yeah. with a, with a yeah. good, good price. Yes. Now onto the juicy topic of design itself, African design. I'm, I'm so curious to hear what, Da living, what Senanu, what activities you're involved in, what you're seeing in terms of um, what you've seen in the last 10 years, I guess, in Ghana, when it in, in your local area, but then also in the broader spectrum of design, what you're seeing and how African influences are coming in. Um, so yeah, yeah, 10 years is a long time and there are there are changes. I think definitely when I started and I thought of the concept and I would sort of just be behind my laptop and think, how's this, you know, how am I going to put this together? Um, these kind of things were happening in the fashion field, but nothing was happening in the home depot field. Um, it really felt like a kind of a pioneering position to put myself in. And then therefore, you know, how am I going to do this? How am I going to do this? Um, even if they were, I think at the time, maybe one store that I would say was a nice home decor store in Accra, it wasn't African. There was nothing African in there. Um, and then where you did have African pieces, very similar to some of the things I'm selling now, it was not a home decor store. It was a gift shop. Mm -hmm. Those were the two, you know, if I wanted to just go and bounce something off someone or go look at some products or some pricing. These were really the only two places that I could go and speak to, you know, the, the CEO or the shop owner. Um, I think now that's definitely changed. Although I won't say that there necessarily any more brick and mortar mm. home decor stores, there's a lot on Instagram. We're all working on Instagram and almost every day I see a new page, a new um, brand, a new individual that is now, um, you know, looking at the basket or the pot or the clay or the cushion or fabric for the cushions um, in a way that I just, I never saw before in mm. Accra. Mm. 
And and so and what about um I know what I'm saying. I'm I watch a lot of design shows. I watch um Architectural Digest and and I watch these home uh, sort of residential property shows and I cannot watch a single episode without seeing a flash of mud cloth or boga or kuba. <laughs> Definitely. Definitely. That is that is really happening. Um, and I don't know if you're like me, but you know, you get into a new TV series and I'm always, I've always been looking at the decor. Yeah. Uh, yes. Consciously at the beginning, but now I realize just how much I do. Yes. Um, and talking about an African city and the actresses that are doing so well that yes. we're on an African city, Nana Mensa, who's now in The Diplomat. Yes. Of that show. But literally the first three episodes of the first series, don't know if you picked up on it. I'm trying to get a close up of the shot. <laughs> but the, the, the cushions um, in a very kind of bleak, bland, you know, diplomat office for yes. um, the actress Kerry Russell. They're yes. like two blue, white cushions, just two. Mm. And the camera goes to them so many times. Basically, those cushions were like another character for me. I was like, I can see these baule cushions. Are they baule? I'm woven, you know, Ivorian kente cushions that Dan Living is producing. Like, what is going on? And yeah. they just, like, there was nothing else really in the office apart from, of course, what they're talking about and everything. But decor wise, it was yeah. very plain, you know, the diplomat office. But then you you just had these two cushions that I'm still trying to figure out, but I'm pretty sure uh, Ivorian baule fabric or That's a print of. Yeah, there you go. Because I'm a student of African design as well. So I'm constantly on the lookout. But I honestly, with the team, we've been discussing how we need to just go back. Because every time you see it, you walk away and you forget about it. But we're thinking about compiling almost like a spot the African design uh, yes. literally yeah. all over it's everywhere it's everywhere yeah. and it makes me sad that there isn't a big huge neon light saying this is African by the way <laughs> let's do it because I'm, I'm looking for that shot and when I find it it's definitely going on Instagram or I don't mm. know like a hashtag like, our living loves to see yes. or something there you, go. you know there you go. in the stories on a constant on a constant yes, yes yeah. absolutely so, so there you go. I mean, I, we've, it's kind of led us to the, my next question, which is how can African, how can African design be incorporated into any modern design? Like how do you, where do you see African design slotting into the different contemporary modern, the contemporary styles of, of decor? I'm so glad that you, you, you put it that way and you say it, because I feel quite alone in this <laughs> in this thinking, at least in, in Accra. Um, I was also involved um, in the, the first um, Interior Design Association for Ghana. Um, okay. it, it started, there was a first group who started it and were executive, uh, a co you know, executive committee, executive directors. Then there was a second group that involved myself and now we're on to the third group. So it's quite a new um, association. Um, and then in some of the conversations I have, international people wanting to do interviews for magazines or whatever, there's this very big um, wanting to sort of African design is 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 a, is a specific design, mm -hmm. and almost put it in a put it in a box, which might be coming from the interior design field, which I guess is not my field, and and so that's fine. But I think I feel very differently or work very differently around that. In that to me, because I guess I'm, I'm, I'm focused on pieces, mm. um, you know, I started focused on pieces. I went into interior decor and, in, you know, interior styling, but really I've come full circle back to mm. the, the pieces and the products are my thing. And mm -hmm. that's where, that's where I sit. That's mm. where Dar Living sits. Mm. Um, and therefore can be incorporated in any, in any style. Right, right. So, you know, cushions here, you can be minimalist, you can be you know, whatever, eclectic, you can be mid-century, you can be, I mean, we have so much mid-century furniture in Ghana, right? Okay. I mean, any furniture that I ever dealt with and sold was definitely mid-century. Mm -hmm. We have our, you know, woodwork, 
chairs, town hall chairs, and so forth. Mm-hmm. Um, yes, yeah. boho, um, boho desert chic. There's nowhere it, where you cannot. It, there's just the choice. Look at the yeah. Look at the um the links with Scandinavian design and African design. I mean, yes. I and then I'm totally in love with all these beautiful photos I'm seeing of of of, in, of style in Mexico. I've never been to Mexico, mm-hmm. but every time I pounce upon, I'm like, oh, who's you know who's this African designer? I said, no, it's not an African mm-hmm. designer. It's mm-hmm. Mexico. Okay. Exactly, um, and I think that some of their basket that some of their basket work really the, the Mexican and also Native American basket work. There's such a strong yes. correlation um yes. and sometimes i've seen it de- the decor styles being combined so that the your african um binga baskets from southern southern africa zimbabwe those ones sitting right alongside mexican baskets completely comfortably and compl- very very complementary to each other yeah and this is what i love to see so for me i wouldn't that's how i would talk about design and i do appreciate that you know it is coming from a from a product angle yes um from a pieces angle and that interior design uh, you know as an as an art and a science is 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 a different field and therefore yeah. they, they may speak about it in a different in a different way yeah wow okay so so where tell us um senanu where people can find you uh, tell us what your social media and um, handles are and where we can find you online as well. Yeah, well, basically right now it's um, Facebook and Instagram at yeah. Darliving. Yes, yeah. that's it. I have a website, um, darliving.com, um, yeah. but it will be updated in due course. It needs updating. Yes. Yeah. Um, so that's where you can find me at the moment. That's amazing. I've really enjoyed, I've really, really enjoyed talking to you um, and sharing some of, (laughs) sharing some of the things that I'm streaming at my TV about um, and really just invite everybody watching this to, to go on to Da Living um, and get some inspiration from there, uh, get in touch with Senanu and uh, keep watching, keep watching that space. Yeah. Yeah, Please get in touch with me at Da Living um darliving at gmail.com okay. so if it's an email then that's that's the that's the email address so senanu akutu thank you so much for spending some time with us it's been really thank wonderful you. thank you thank you for having me all right